the, the case itself, a male patient, 32 years old, who has been suffering from mild periorbital pain for the past two months. It's accompanied by progressive swelling of the left superior eyelid and lacrimal gland area. No skin modifications. He didn't have any particular history. His general examination was normal except painless cervical nodes. A chest X-ray performed on a regular basis a week ago was normal. Blood examination was normal as well. No abnormal cells, no signs of inflammation or infection were found. Eventually, the patient underwent MRI orbital examination followed by an ultrasound study with Doppler. And this is the findings. The following two slides illustrate the MRI findings. Top row images are T1, coronal T1 weighted images, and the bottom ones are coronal T2 weighted images. In both of the sequences, we can see a left extraconal mass that is located in the lacrimal fossa. We don't see the normal appearance of the lacrimal gland. Uh, therefore, the finding is uh, compatible with a diffusely enlarged lacrimal gland. Uh, it appears uh, it is a pierce homogeneous uh, intermediate uh, signal intensity to gray matter on T1 weighted images and uh, iso intense at the periphery and hypo intense at, in the middle of the uh, lesion on T2 weighted images. The mass is mostly well defined, uh, molding around the globe uh, and displaces the globe inferiorly without distortion. Uh, there is no there is no optic nerve involvement uh, there is poor differentiation uh, between the mass and uh, adjacent muscles in the proximal insertion it's superior rectus muscle and, uh, and lateral rectus, mu rectus muscle we we'll continue with MRI findings uh, on the left of the slide uh, are the DWI and ADC maps. On the right of the slide and in the middle of the slide are Excel and coronal uh, T1 weighted images with fat suppression and a uh, contrast injection. After contrast injection, we can see strong enhancement of uh, in left enlarged lacrimal gland. Probably the periphery is slightly more enhanced. We can see also enhancement of the adjacent soft tissue and fat. Optic nerve is not enhanced and the lateral rectus muscle is not involved. Superior rectus muscle is not fully included in this series of imaging. Maybe there is some signal void in the superomedial part of the finding that could be vascularization. DWI and ADC shows, show intermediate signal in, signals in the left orbit similar to those to the, 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 the normal lacrimal plan. No restriction uh, is found, uh, were found, was found. And, and to be honest, we have no experience in ultrasound orbits, but based on general knowledge of uh, ultrasound and ultrasound Doppler, there is soft tissue mass with vascularization that could be in the anterior part of the orbit that could be enlarged lacrimal gland with slightly distended vessels. On spectral display, we see low resistive index. And this is the bonus picture for the audience. Yes, who is the painter? <laughs> <laughs> and while you are thinking, uh, I will discuss the main differential diag diagnosis based on the uh, imaging findings. So, possible differential diagnosis. Lacrimal gland lesions uh, may be uh, may broadly classified to two groups, inflammatory and neoplastic. Inf inflammatory disorders cause enlarge diffuse enlargement of lacrimal gland. Infectious lacrodinitis it's the most common pathology of lacrimal gland. And since there is no fever lymphadenopathy and leukocytosis, 
This diagnosis is less possible in our case. Sarcoidosis is less possible, is also less possible because due to the normal chest X-ray and unilateral localization of the lesion. In most of the cases of sarcoidosis, there is systemic involvement and it's usually bilateral involvement of the uh, lacrimal gland. Humorous disease, it's something rare. It's chronically inflammatory condition and it's a rare cause of a tumor-like uh, mass in head and neck. It, it's typically present as painless tumor-like nodules and it could be associated with a regional lymphadenopathy. Eosinophilia and elevated immunoglobulin E levels uh, almost always present. Uh, in lack of these findings, the diagnosis of Kimura's disease is less possible in our case. Lymphoma and lymphoid hyperplasia. Uh, it, it can be, uh, it's the most common cause of painless proptosis. A lymphoma is more common in adults after age 50. A lymphoma can be very difficult to distinguish from a pseudo tumor, um, but D DWI is an MRI technique that has recently been proven effective in distinguishing these two entities. So, based on, on the radiological findings, Particular in ADC and DWI, I drew conclusion that it could be the most probable diagnosis could be pseudotumor. Pseudotumor, orbital pseudotumor. Exactly, exactly. It, it's an inflammation. It's perfect. 